So this game is called Hyper Rogue uh, that I'm playing right now, and what it is, it's a uh, roguelike video game, but it's set on a mathematical construct called the hyperbolic plane. Uh, so this is different from uh, like normal, normal Euclidean geometry of a flat plane uh, in several ways. Uh, you can see that uh, the, I'm standing on what looks like a sort of a, a hex grid that shows up in a lot of video games, but interspersed with these hexagons that are stylized in this area are the occasional heptagons, seven-sided polygons. Uh, in, on a normal Euclidean plane, you can't fit uh, two hexagons and a heptagon together. There's, not, there's too much angle between them. Um, but a, hyper, a, a hyperbolic uh, space and a hyperbolic plane in, in particular is non-Euclidean geometry, which has some specific properties, uh, in particular that the angles of a polygon uh, sum up to, um, well, for triangles, less than 180, and for, other, for larger polygons, less than the number we get in Euclidean space. Uh, so this means that you can fit more and more larger polygons together at angles, and this causes all sorts of interesting properties. Uh, first of all, as we go out, when we go out, there become there's becomes exponentially more space. Uh, in a sense, the hyperbolic plane is a lot larger than Euclidean space. Um, uh, you see these um, these walls between the two between areas in the game. I'll, I'll start moving forward with them, and you can see that the translations of hyperbolic space don't look as uh, linear or as sort of parallel to each other as those Euclidean space. These are straight lines, even that, that occurred. The model of the hyperbolic plane that we're looking at in this game is called the Poincaré disk model, um, wherein straight lines are represented as circles that are perpendicular to the disk at the edge of the Poincaré disk model. The disk is actually the point at infinity. As we move towards it, uh, the, um, the, uh, the heptagons and hexagons uh, out of that disk get, get larger as they approach us and get smaller as they go away from us. So the game itself is played by collecting sorts of treasures in various different lands, like uh, roguelikes you may know of. This is the, the starting land, which is the ice land. And they all have sorts of uh, interesting gimmicks that show off the properties of hyperbolic space. This one um, is more subtle than the others, just because it's the starting area. The gimmick is how heat dissipates in hyperbolic space. As you can see, um, each cell is listed with its temperature. Uh, and as you, the character, move around, you heat up the place around you, and this uh, affects the AI of these wolves, which rather than immediately follow you, always go towards the hottest point next to them. And so, uh, basically, you kill anything in one hit, but anything will kill you in one hit. However, the game is forgiving in that if you tr if you move somewhere where you where you would get killed, it just doesn't let you do that, and you can only lose the game by sort of checkmating yourself. So, what you want to be doing is collecting uh, at least ten of the uh, the treasure item from any given. Uh, zone, so I've got 14 while I've been talking. As you can see, I've been clicking to show where I'll go next, or direct myself where I'll go next. Uh, so we're in a new area now, the cave. Um, and the rules of the cave are sort of like a cellular automaton, in that each um, uh, cell of the floor of, or of the wall turns into the uh, whatever its majority of its neighbors are, um, with some specific weights on the gold treasure items. And this is a troll, which when you kill it, it creates wall around itself. In Euclidean space, um, the properties of this would cause uh, would cause you basically to just get, get closed in in a bubble after you've gone only so far, just statistically. But in hyperbolic space, uh, because there are there's so much more degrees of freedom, it creates uh, much more tree-like structures, and you're pretty much free to go in uh, lots of directions from any given point. Bit of a hairy situation here. Collecting more items. And we'll look for somewhere else now. You can see the, uh, the living cave walls uh, sort of rearranging themselves uh, as they spawn in. Let's kill these things before they pile up too much. And there are also orb powers, which give you like different powers. Once you've collected uh, certain enough items in a given zone, they'll spawn. This one lets you walk through living cave walls and has some other properties in different areas.
Now we're going to the jungle, where hopefully I will not die. So in the jungle, uh, the things that you encounter are these uh, ivies, which uh, spawn more um, of themselves around them in a circular pattern, and they'll kill you if they spawn if they spawn one on top of you, which they aim towards you. So that's hard. And again, if this were in Euclidean space, the the whole space would get packed with ivies pretty uh, pretty quickly. However, there's just so much more space uh, in the in any given direction in hyperbolic space that you can just go that you're much more free uh, in hyperbolic space. I still have the orb of the Earth power, so we're in the desert now, and this is creating sand dunes behind me. The, uh, the gimmick here are these sandworms, which you can't kill, but they move only at half the speed of regular enemies. Um, and they die if they run into their own tails or get stuck. But because, again, there's, there's so much more directions you can go, uh, this, this happens much more infrequently than it would if this game were played in Euclidean space. I left the jungle pretty quickly because I'm not very good at it. This is the ocean area, which just has a sea that rises and falls, and boats that you need to be on in order to not get killed by the sea. The ocean isn't here yet. It's uh, probably going to show up pretty quickly. There it is. And while this looks like a circle, it's actually a equidistant curve from that wall I came in through to this place. Uh, so the distinction between circles and lines and circle and line like curves uh, in hyperbolic space uh, gets kind of diminished. Um, uh, the curve that is equidistant from a line isn't a line itself. What does this do? I haven't gotten one of these before. I guess we'll never know. I imagine it lets me fly in some capacity. And so there are around 30 different uh, kinds of lands that are available to you. Here we have the living fjord, which is like the living sea, but with water. And right now I'm running up next to the land of eternal motion, which is, allows me to demonstrate some interesting concepts. So here, the... Uh, the ground disappears as you walk under it, and you're pursued by these running dogs, which will try to run up next to you and uh, make you stop or either attack you. Uh, but because they have to run, al run along next to you rather than right behind you, uh, they have to stay the same distance away from you. And if you follow a straight line, they can't follow a straight line next to you because straight lines either converge or diverge in the hyperbolic plane. Uh, rather than uh, stay the same distance away from you. Uh, one of the main ways that you can define hyperbolic plane is to say that there are multiple parallel lines that, a, that any line can have. For instance, if we had a lot of these um, straight lines uh, to, the edge of the, um, to the edge of the disk, they would all be mutually parallel to each other, which is something that can't happen that way in Euclidean space. Anyway, so, so these dogs have to follow equidistant curves along you, which are longer than the lines uh, themselves if you traverse the line by the same amount of distance. And that means they have to, th that you can outrun them even though they run at the same speed that you do. Unfortunately, if a bird gets in, those can fly over the chasm and then uh, you run into some problems. So here is an orb of safety which uh, reloads the game and also lets you save the game. Let's go somewhere else. Here's the minesweeper uh, area. Again, the, uh, the degrees of freedom prevent you from getting boxed in. Uh, but this is either going to kill me or wind up making me go through it a lot slower. So let's try and get out of here as quickly as we can. And as you, as you can see up in the corner, I've been, I've been collecting more treasures uh, and increasing various numbers. This, uh, th this area would also sort of block you off a lot more easily than in Euclidean space as opposed to in hyperbolic space. Let's 
got these walls that you have to knock through one or two times in order to get through. And sooner or later, So these, these guys I have to sort of en passant, if you know chess terminology, in order to kill. Sooner or later, one of these should spawn, and those fire fairies will light the whole place on fire, and I died. Uh, you, you get killed pretty easily in this game if you don't pay attention to what you're doing. Let's restart. So we're back here, and we're, we're collecting more things, and... See if we can find some different worlds to go through. Here's the jungle again. I'm gonna stay in the ice world until I've collected at least ten ice treasures. Let's go in the cave rather than the jungle. Look for more stuff. Killed. So this, this is turn-based, even though uh, sometimes it looks like the game state is advancing when I'm just standing in one place. Uh, that's because I'm clicking on myself to skip a turn. Here we have an enemy that can move through walls, but it's stuck on a single tile of wall that it's keeping alive by itself. So here we have uh, three uh, parallel lines that could have even more parallel lines, parallel lines put between them. Uh, you, you uh, as, as some folks like to call them ultra parallel lines when they're not converging, since uh, since this game is set on a grid, you can't have you can't have lines that converge directly. So here I've got an orb that gives me a buddy. Should be helpful. Who will get promptly lost in the land of eternal motion, or not be able to get into the land of eternal motion because I've chasmed off the uh, the entrance I took. So as you as you progress through the game and um, collect more treasures, more lands will start to spawn. Um, and even though these lands are basically infinite and bounded by just the occasional uh, line, those lines are still infinite. And again, just the fact that you can have multiple parallel lines to uh, any given line makes the um, just gives you tons of degrees of freedom. So you can you can see that most in here. This is the crossroads, uh, and even though it looks like sort of corners, uh, these are again all straight lines. Um, just infinite, infinitely long straight lines. Uh, so this is this is mirror land, which uh, shows you sort of how these parallel lines diverge. So. Mirror, when you run into the, one of these uh, these mirror uh, objects, uh, you get a treasure point, but you also spawn a bunch of mirror images or mirages around you. And these will um, follow the same thing as you do. So the mirror images don't show this off as well, but the, uh, when you run into these, this creates mirages which go in the same direction as you. So if I just go forward, they all just diverge off to elsewhere, um, and you pretty much lose track of them immediately. Parallel lines diverge in hyperbolic space. Uh, but they, those can be used uh, when they're nearby you to attack uh, nearby enemies. You don't want to use them to set off the uh, mirror devices, though, and you can see the, 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 uh, their imaginary cursors are those green dots which are in relation to where my cursor is.
as you can see, they, they sort of will set off chain reactions of mirror images. But if you go backwards, they sort of converge back on you and then will diverge away again soon. Not going to chance that. So once you've collected enough treasures in a given area, that, that area's orbs will also spawn in the, in the crossroads. Uh, that one just zaps everything around you. This area has like uh, various random spawned pressure plates that open and close doors. The green pres pre pre pressure plates will open all the doors that are nearby them, and the red ones will close all the doors that are nearby them. It also has trap doors, which you can knock enemies into, because another sort of vid more video gamey gimmick of this particular area is that the enemies have multiple hit points. As you can see, I've set up, set up a trap door, but I don't immediately die. So these, these items are all given various uh, names. These ones are rugs, and I died. Well, anyway, that's, I, I think uh, that's been sufficient enough to show off uh, the interesting stuff in Hyper Rogue. Some of the more difficult quests, some of the more end gamey stuff uh, are the symbol quests of going somewhere and then retracing your, retracing your steps back because lines diverge so quickly in... Um, in hyperbolic space, if you try to if you try to go back the way you came, and if you make one slight mistake, you're going to be pretty much immediately make yourself lost. And another uh, difficult quest uh, uh, that you get rewarded for is to be able to get to the center of a circle of radius twenty eight, uh, because uh, lines sort of curve away. If you, if you draw a circle um, of radius twenty eight. It's only about seven uh, units away to two units away to what stops being drawn, and a circle of radius twenty-eight. Um, because these things get uh, in the in the ideal case get infinitely many and infinitely small towards the uh, towards the ideal disk. Um, a circle of radius twenty-eight would basically show up as a very um, a, a a circle that's very close to the edge at infinity. And so, if you try to follow a straight line from that edge. Uh, unless you unless unless you point yourself in the exact right direction, it's just going to diverge off towards the edge, and you won't be able to tell that you're at. You won't be able to tell that whether you've gone uh, this far or this far or this far, because um, uh, the edge is all sort of indistinct. And a circle of radius twenty eight has like. Uh, in hyperbolic space, will actually have like millions of cells within it. So anyway, uh, you can get this game for free um, at its developer's website, uh, which I've put in the description for this link. Um, however, that version is usually updated at one version behind the $3 version that's on Steam, um, which is also uh, has more platforms to support. The, uh, the OS X and Linux versions on the developer's website are only up to the version 4, whereas this this is the paid version, which is version 8, and the free version is currently version 7.4. So I hope you've enjoyed this, uh, this, this uh, Hyper Rogue gameplay video from the Center of Math, and I encourage you to uh, subscribe to our channel if you want more interesting mathematics and just fun content.